does any other woman who dates and deals with men wake up on a Sunday morning and be like, oh, fuck, I'm the problem? Because that's me today. I realize that I am the issue. I called a guy at two in the morning last night, told him to come over. Okay. All right. He's a roster member. I call him Little Chico, and I do, in fact, call him that to his face. What are you going to do? Anyways. All right, Nicole. And he said when he was leaving, looking forward to the next 2 a.m. call. And I go, oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. Wow. And last night, I also gave my number to a bartender on my receipt. And he texted me, hey, how you doing? What's up? Okay. Nicole, what are you doing? Like, I don't know. I'm like, as a girl who complains about fuckboys a lot, I'm like, I think I'm the issue. I'm the fuck girl. Oh my God. So I guess next steps are, do I do something about it? I just don't really have time right now. Like I, I'm a little stressed and that's fine, but I just don't really have time to date. I don't know. So that's why I'm like, do I just keep fucking around? And just doing this shit? I don't know. Also, last night was a night where I, like, was like, oh, I'm not going out. Obviously. I end up out. So, yeah. I realize I'm the problem. And probably going to keep going. Love these strips. All right, bye. Sis, listen. I know there are times that we make mistakes with our coochies. Don't worry. You're not alone. All you need to do is reset that kitty. Reprogram that coochie. Clear your coochie cachet. You have to remember that you are the master of your domain. You are the queen of your motherfucking castle. And also remember that if it didn't feel good, it doesn't fucking count. Fuck I look like. I'm not adding that to my body count. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, bestie. <laughs> You're wrong. I think it's time for another adult pre-K lesson. What do you think? All right, turn your listening ears on. You catch a bubble in your mouth. Good job. Okay, here's the thing. Having a preference is something like, I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking or wakes up early in the morning or loves pizza. <laughs> But when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. Okay, that's not nice. That's not a preference. If you lump all fat people in one group together as though they are not very different individuals, that's fat phobic. Just like lumping all black people in one group and saying, I don't like black people is racist. And lumping all disabled people in one group and saying, I don't think people in wheelchairs are hot is ableist. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Siri, why am I single? Maybe if you'd stop being a stupid bitch and reply to the people that actually show interest in you instead of chasing someone that you know. The most eye-opening thing I ever learned about men was from my college human sexuality class where the professor told us that men don't actually like women. Not all men. Sure, but hang in. He said that the way that our society socializes boys to, quote, become men is not to tell them how to be men. It's just to teach them how to not be women. Don't cry, be a man. Don't be a pussy, be a man. Don't be weak, be a man. Don't be sensitive, be a man. Don't like those things, those are girl things. And the tool we use to do the, that kind of socializing, to steer them away from feminine things, is shame. And you just can't go your whole life being told that the worst thing you could do is be like a woman and expect to actually like women at the end of that. But they are also taught that their sexual attractiveness to women and their ability to get women is a status symbol in front of other men. So they will sexually pursue women, but they don't actually like them as people. This is how patriarchal masculinity socializes men and why shame, violence, and disgust are so intricately linked. I find it really interesting that men say stuff like this and then in the same breath complain about how the penal system isn't fair to men or how family courts aren't fair to men or how male victims don't have a lot of recognition or mental health resources. Like, who, who did that? So I'm not going to pretend I have any answers for this male loneliness epidemic thing going on uh, because I feel like it's a complex issue and also some of those guys it is their fault and then others it's not. But something I've always found really interesting is that in platonic female friendships, women are very strongly encouraged to give each other a lot of both emotional and physical love and support. Um, and I'm not saying that 
every woman has friends like that and no men have friends like that. I'm just talking about like what's generally encouraged by society. During the time periods in my life where I've been single, at least as an adult, I've never felt lonely or alone um, and never felt a rush to get into a relationship because I have a lot of physical and emotional love and support from my female friends around me. I get a lot of hugs, I get a lot of compliments, I get a lot of like, you are important to me and I value you in my life, let's spend time together, etc. But I was talking to a male friend about this recently and he was saying that the last time that he got like a genuine hug from a man was when he was like 12. Uh, and so the only real genuine physical contact that he ever gets is if he's either hooking up with or in a relationship with a woman. And ironically, the guys I know who do treat their friendships like that are often made fun of for being feminine. Again, I'm not presenting this as like an answer to a problem or something. It's just something relevant that I've been thinking about. Accepting that you are most likely going to be alone for the rest of your life is a really hard pill to swallow. And it's not even because there's anything wrong with me or that I am not deserving. I'm just tired. I've spent most of my life recovering from men who have caused so much trauma. My, my physical brain um, cannot handle anymore. It is always in survival mode. It is always in fight or flight mode. My, my, my brain has never fully recovered from the trauma that has been caused. I meet guys and I feel like I'm constantly looking for a reason to not trust them because I have never experienced a good man before. Like I've never been in a good, healthy relationship. I don't even know what that looks like. I don't even know what to look for. I don't know what is normal. I've never experienced normal. How am I supposed to know? And now I'm 37 and every man that I meet is disappointing and doesn't add value to my life, doesn't make me happy, and I just don't want to settle anymore. How do I know if someone is the one? I mean, is there something wrong with me? I, I question it all the time, but I, I know that I'm just fucking traumatized. What does a loving man feel like? What does a healthy relationship feel like? What does it feel like when you have found your person? I, I've been in so many relationships, long relationships, and no one has ever, ever added value to my life or made me feel like I was enough. And it makes me sad that I have never gotten to experience this. It genuinely makes me sad. But I just don't know if it actually exists. So I will probably be alone. And that, that scares me, but I am slowly accepting that this is probably my fate and I need to learn to love myself and I need to tell myself that that is enough, that I don't need a partner to be whole. And that is my journey right now. I'm not an expert. I am not putting expert advice into the world. This is just my journey and what I'm going through right now. And if you're going through the same, you're not alone. I don't know, maybe that's my purpose, to learn to be on my own and let others know that it's okay.